Morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is O.P. Yadav, Editor-in-Chief of Indian Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery and CEO of National Heart Institute in Delhi. It's indeed our proud privilege to have with us the Professor David Taggart. Thank you. David, thanks a lot. You do us a great honor by your presence here. That's very generous of you. Thank you. David is Professor of Cardiac Surgery at Oxford and a great innovator and a scientific brain. Thank you. David, so much ink has been spilled on total arterial revascization and yet hardly any blood spilled on it. What do you think is the reason that 80% of our conduits still are venous conduits? Well, that's a great question and I'm often asked this because it shows that most people's practice doesn't really follow the best evidence, at least in terms of patency of conduits. So even a current contemporary analysis of vein graft patency from the five trials of radial artery versus saphenous vein show that by five years, almost 25% of veins are occluded. And that's really similar to data that we've known going back over two decades. On the other hand, there's very robust angiographic evidence that both ITA grafts remain patent at out to 90 up to 90% out to 20 years. And we now know without any doubt that the radial artery has substantially better patency than vein grafts at five years. So why surgeons have been so reluctant to take advantage of this naturally improved patency that arterial grafts have isn't really clear. So what do you think should we be doing to drive that point home that is it that we need to incentivize use of IMAs through financial incentives or there should be a legislation by the bodies, by the regulatory mm. authorities that it is mandatory to do this? Well, again, that, that encompasses a, a number of important questions. So if we look, I mean, the reason we conducted the ARC trial was to try and produce evidence objective scientific evidence that there was a potential benefit of bilateral ITA grafts. Now, in the interim analysis of that, which was neutral at five years, no difference between single and bilateral ITA grafts, some people have tried to use that to suggest you shouldn't use bilateral ITA grafts. But you have a 10-year results now, do you? Yeah, so the, just before we come to the 10-year results, there was an important signal at five years that there appeared to be a survival advantage almost approaching statistical significance in patients under 70 years of age. Okay. And as you have correctly said, we will have the 10-year results of that trial completed by around June of this year. Okay. Well, we will be with abated breath looking yes. forward to the R trial. And uh, in Cephanus vein, do we now feel that we are at the end of the tunnel and the maximum has been done or do you think we can improve the patency rates? I think we can improve the patency rates of veins. There's a number of ways you can do this. Improving the storage solutions that we use when veins are harvested from the leg. The use of the no-touch harvest technique done by Domingo Souza and colleagues yeah. from Oribro. The work done by Kibong Kim in the Save Rita trial where if you attach a vein to an ITA the patency rates seem very much better, and perhaps that's because of, imp because of the fact that the ITA releases nitric oxide into the vein. And the other innovation which I'm working on just now in Oxford is the use of an external stent for vein grafts. And our prelim preliminary analysis of this at one and now five years looks very encouraging indeed in improving the saphenous vein graft patency. Well, uh Good that you preempted that, and I was going to bring you to the West trial. I know, I'm also aware of a couple of other publications by Shuttler and Emery. Yeah. When they look at the, uh, the external stent, they reported a patency rate of somewhere around 27%. Yes. So uh, I know the criticism of that they used less than 3 millimeter external wraps, but even after the 3 millimeter wraps were removed, and in Emery, we find that the patency rates have not really improved. So this is a so very, where did they go wrong? So this is a very important question because 
The first is that the concept of external stenting is actually 50 years old now, when Parsonet started in the 1960s. And then Angelini's group in Bristol tried a polyester stent and had very poor results at six months with up 100% failure. And then the, the Kipsby external stent. And the results with that have been uniformly poor, as you have said, patencies of about 30% at one year. If you look at the current data we have from our VEST-3 trial, that's a 180 patient randomized trial, we, produ we produced an interim analysis of that for AATS last year, and the patency with our external stent, the so-called VEST stent, is 90% at six months. So there's a dramatic improvement in the patency if you use the appropriate tool. So what different did you do to bring the patency from 27% to 90%? Again, very good question, but it's quite a simple answer is that the previous devices that have been used are really quite crude in comparison to what we use. We use a very flexible, very thin stent, which supports the vein, but is kink and crush resistant. So it's simply, te the technology is so much better now than it was even five years ago. And how do you hold it in place? They were using fibrin glues, yeah. any adhesives? That's correct. And fibrin glue is known to cause yeah. inflammation in the abdomen tissue of vein grafts. But the stent I use has memory. So once you stretch it over the vein, stays it there. stays there. You don't need to stitch, suture, or glue it. Well, so ladies and gentlemen, we just heard Professor David Taggart. There is no match to total arterial revascularization using bilateral memories. And he's already hinted that at five years, there was some kind of a suge suggestion of the survival curves diverging. And at 10 years, hopefully, we will see evidence in the R trial to support or at least address the critiques who are not taking to bilateral memories that there is no evidence base. However, cephalus vein is not down and out. If you look after it technically well, store it well, not over distend, and maybe some cell-based therapies, and things like putting it to IMA to increase the nitric oxide, and the external stents in which David is working on his West 3 trial, the results may improve in the future. Well, David, thanks a lot, and we appreciate your help and support to our association and to the journal. Well, thank you for interviewing me. Yeah. Thank you for having thank me at the meeting, and it's great to meet old friends. I have many friends in India, so thank you for inviting me to the meeting. Thanks a thank lot. You.